People in our country struggle to meet their fundamental needs. Many of us go without healthy food, adequate housing, health care, and education. We can't find jobs that pay a living wage, and we lack secure income. More and more people are being forced into poverty. The gap between people in poverty and people with excessive wealth is growing. Inequality is at an all-time high. Public services are being dismantled, jobs eliminated, and many people are no longer able to have a dignified standard of living. Our federal, state, and city budgets have a lot to do with this. A budget is first and foremost a document that should express the values of the people. Each time we make a budget, we should be clear about the kind of society we want to have and how we want to raise and spend money to make this happen. But that's not how budgets are currently decided. The budget process we have now starts with an estimate of how much income from taxes can be expected in a given year, based on past tax decisions. Then a budget proposal is drawn up, with a spending plan to match that income. The problem is that this proposal doesn't start with figuring out what our communities really need. Instead, it starts with assumptions about how much money will come in. That money or revenue tends to be lower than what it takes to meet people's needs. Elected officials then talk about deficits and begin to cut our public services, programs, and jobs. This budget process puts money before people. Because of this backwards way of making budgets, there never seems to be enough money to meet our fundamental needs. We end up defending different programs against cuts, and we compete over spending for healthcare, education, housing, and job creation. This makes us divided rather than united. But all human beings have human rights, which arise from our fundamental needs. We come together as communities and form a government because we can't meet our needs alone, in isolation from each other. Our government has an obligation to help us meet our needs and realize our rights. This means we need a completely new approach to making budgets. We must put people before money. The real purpose of a budget must be to enable all of us to meet our fundamental needs. We live in the world's most prosperous country, and there's more than enough for everyone. Yet our money and resources are shared in an inequitable way that benefits only a few and denies basic rights to everyone else. Our budget must ensure that we all get what we need and give what we can. This is how it would work. First, we assess people's needs. Then we apply the human rights principles of universality and equity to guide us in finding ways to meet those needs. We use markers or indicators to measure progress and to make the budget accountable to us. We engage people throughout the budget process so that everyone can participate in developing goals and priorities for spending and raising money. Everything must be transparent. Once we have a budget proposal based on people's needs, we decide what taxes we should pay to fund this budget using the same principles of universality and equity. A budget based on human rights, a people's budget, will enable all of us to meet our needs and enjoy our rights. The public services that help us meet our needs will become public goods that belong to all of us. We contribute to paying for those services in an equitable way through our taxes. We get what we need and give what we can. We will live in a just world where all people can thrive in healthy communities.